Elastic Rice here again with another Dreams official tutorial and this is probably what I found the most stressful tutorial of them all. This is about the sculpting basics. Are you new to sculpting? In no time at all, I can show you how to sculpt your own objects from scratch. Which will come in handy, because Cuthbert has helpfully stranded himself on a distant platform again. Luckily, Connie knows we can use the tools in sculpt mode to get to Cuthbert and escort him to safety. Go to the assembly menu, press square to open it if it's closed, and select the modes menu with the X button. Select sculpt mode with X. Its icon is some 3D shapes. Entering sculpt mode from the modes menu will create a new sculpture. Notice that when you're in sculpt mode, everything outside the sculpture will be blurred and greyed out to help you focus on what you're creating. You can adjust the visual feedback in your preferences, which you can find in the options menu. When you first enter sculpt mode, the shapes menu will always be open automatically and the smear shape tool will be equipped to your imp. The smear shape tool lets you smear shapes in your sculpture, great for making organic forms. Before we start smearing, move your view a bit closer to the action, looking side on to the first gap by Connie. Make sure you can see the platform on either side of the gap and that your imp can reach them. Since we want to build an organic structure for Connie to walk on, we should probably pick an appropriate shape. So select one from the shapes menu and then you can see it on the end of your imp. Use the up and down directional buttons to scale it to an appropriate size. While you have a shape on your imp, you can use the grab cam to zoom in and out. Just hold R1 and use the left stick. Now position your imp next to the platform on one side of the gap. Then hold down R2 and use the motion sensor function or left stick to smear your shape in the gap so that Connie can walk on it. If you want to have another go at it, just undo using the left directional button. Feel free to let go and press R2 as many times as you want. Each press will create a new edit within your sculpture. Bear in mind that all the edits you make are all part of a single sculpture, even if they aren't connected. That means in assembly mode, they'll behave like a single object. Why not try out different shapes to see what works best? Try holding L2 as you sculpt and use the left and right sticks to rotate the shape. Maybe try making something like a rock formation or a tree trunk. The cool thing is sculpts are automatically physical, so they can be walked on by puppets like Connie immediately. So when you want to try it out, switch to play mode in the options menu and get Connie to walk around on your sculpture. Hmm, what happens when we want to edit an existing sculpture rather than start a new one? Let's investigate. When we went into play mode, we were taken out of sculpt mode. When you're in assembly mode, scope back into your sculpture. Hover over it with your imp, hold L1, and press X. It's just like scoping into a group. Have a go at it now. Now we're here, let's try editing the existing shapes you've already made. To move or rotate shapes, unequip the smear shape tool by pressing the circle button. This automatically equips the move tool. You might notice most of the movement controls in sculpt mode are the same as in assembly mode. Grab and move shapes with R2 and rotate them using L2 and the sticks or the touchpad. You can hold L1 and move with R2 to clone your shapes or scale them up with the up and down buttons. You can even repeat clone. But the one big difference is that you can't select shapes in sculpt mode like you can select objects in assembly mode. 
Now try moving, rotating and scaling your individual shapes. If you want to use the Smear Shape tool again, just go to the Sculpt Tools menu and select Smear Shape. The icon is a row of intersecting squares. Now maybe you could have a play around sculpting with different shapes. Don't forget you can undo and redo at any time. If you accidentally scope out, you can scope back into your sculpture by hovering over it with your imp and pressing L1 and X. In the next step, I'll show you how to colour your sculpture. You've probably noticed by now that all your sculptures are orangey brown like clay. That's the default colour, but you can sculpt with any colour you like. If you're in assembly mode, scope back into your sculpture by hovering over it with your imp, then hold L1 and press X. Next, head to the colours section in the sculpt menu and press X over a colour group to see the different shades. Now, choose a colour, any one you like. And magic! The shape on your imp is now the colour you chose. Any new shapes you make will be that colour. But the old shapes are still brown. But luckily we can also colour shapes after we've created them, using the spray paint tool. Go to the Sculpt menu and open the Tools section with X. And then select the Spray Paint tool, which has a spray can icon. Now your imp will have an outline of the shape on its tip. Intersect the shape with your sculpture and you'll see the spray paint colour appear on them. And then hold R2 to apply the spray paint to the shapes. You can try out different colours and shapes to completely change the look of your sculpture. And if you want to make it easier to keep your imp on the surface of the sculpture, you can use the Surface Snap Guide. You can find Surface Snap in the Sculpt Guides menu. Select it with X to turn it on. There's a Guides menu in every mode, though not all guides are available everywhere. You can also change the finish of your sculpture using the Finishes menu. The first art tutorial has more on finishes, if you're curious. By now you should have an organic looking form, and it will be whatever colour your imagination conjured up. If you switched on Surface Snap, switch it off in the Guides menu before continuing. Just select the button with X to turn it off. Then when you're ready, proceed to the next step. All of these smeared shapes are creating one single sculpture, even if there's space between them. But you can also use the Smear tool to remove parts of the sculpture instead of adding to it. And to do that we need to make the tool subtractive. Scope into your sculpture if you haven't already with L1 and X. When the Smear Shape tool is equipped to your imp, you can press Triangle to make it subtractive and you'll notice that your imp turns into an outline. The shape on your imp becomes an outline too. You can now use the Smear tool to cut into your sculpture. Try using different shapes to see what effect they have. You can also try some cool effects by subtracting with a different coloured shape on your imp. Pretty great, right? You can switch the tool between additive and subtractive by pressing triangle. Why not play around with the tools a bit? Make a dramatic or interesting looking form. When you're happy with its shape, go into play mode and see if you can get Connie across it. 
If you need to edit it, just come back to edit mode via the options menu. Don't forget to scope back into your sculpture to edit it. Using L1 and X, Connie has successfully crossed the first gap in play mode. Switch back to edit mode, then go to the next step. Smearing shapes can be a messy business. Sometimes you want to create neat sculptures. Luckily, there are ways to help you do that. So go to the assembly menu and select sculpt in the modes menu. This will create a new sculpture. Now let's practice sculpting an architectural structure over the second gap here. To help us build a neater bridge, open the Guides section of the Sculpt menu. In Guides, switch on Grid Snap by pressing X over it. You'll see a number appear next to the button. That's how big the grid squares will be. You'll also notice a white dotted grid in the scene. The spacing of the dots shows the tightness of the grid. They will change orientation depending on your point of view. We'll leave it at the default setting for now. You can experiment with it later. Now try making a colourful sculpture using the Smear and Move tools and the Colours menu. This will just be a practice one, so don't spend too long on it. We'll delete it and make an even better one in a minute. You'll notice it's much easier to keep your shapes neat and straight this time. That's because Grid Snap is active. It makes your tools and objects snap to the grid. It also helps you rotate precisely. Try using L2 or the touchpad. With Grid Snap on, you rotate objects 45 degrees at a time. You can rotate the shape on the end of your imp before you stamp it, or use the Move tool to rotate shapes that are already placed. When you're comfortable sculpting with Grid Snap, continue to the next step. If you want to make a super neat bridge, there's another guide we can try. If you're still in sculpt mode, scope out of it with L1 and circle. Once you're back in assembly mode, delete your sculpture with triangle and go to the modes menu. Click the sculpt mode button to start a new sculpture. Now we're in sculpt mode, the guides menu will have different options. Open the Guide section of the Sculpt menu and switch on the Mirror Guide. Don't worry about the two additional options. Let's investigate them later. Also check that Grid Snap is still turned on. Now select the Smear tool in your chosen colour and shape. The mirror guide will always be centred on the first shape you make. That's why we started a new sculpture. Now move your view so you can see the whole of the second gap and your imp can reach it. If you need to, use the grab cam to zoom out a little from the shape on your imp. Now stamp your first shape right in the centre of the gap to enable the mirror guide. Then smear your shape from the centre to the edge of the gap where it meets the platform. You'll see that your sculpt is mirrored, so you only have to make half a bridge and it will be nice and symmetrical. So we can focus on making it fabulous. Carry on sculpting and carving your bridge till you're happy. Test it in play mode. And when Connie is over the second gap, return to edit mode via the options menu. Then switch off the mirror guide. You can also switch off grid snap if you want to, before moving on to the next step. Now we need to create a bridge across the last gap. For that, we're going to use the mighty stamp tool. First, we'll need to create a new sculpture by going to Sculpt Mode via the Modes menu. 
now that you're in sculpt mode, make sure you've switched off the mirror guide before you continue. You'll be equipped with the smear shape tool by default, so you need to switch to the stamp shape tool. You can find stamp shape in the sculpt mode tools menu. Next to smear shape, its icon is a simple square. You can quickly switch between the stamp and smear tools using L1 and triangle. It's a bit like switching between additive and subtractive, but with L1 held down. Stamping shapes is a bit like stamping objects from the Dreamiverse. With the stamp shape tool, you only stamp one shape at a time, no matter how long you hold R2 or X. This has additional benefits too, which you'll see later. Now select the cube in the shapes menu, then stamp one at the side of the gap. We're almost there, Connie. Open the Sculpt Tools menu again, and this time pick the Stretch tool. Its icon is a double-ended arrow. When selected, hovering your imp over a shape will cause an arrow gizmo to appear. Hover over the side of the cube that's facing the opposite platform. Press and hold R2 when the arrow is showing, and use your imp to stretch the shape across the gap. Nice! Let go of R2 when you're done stretching. It's not a very exciting bridge right now, but I've got something very exciting to customise it with soon. You can stretch any shape you've sculpted, regardless of what shape it is. Spheres, cones, and even donuts can be stretched. You can even stretch subtractive shapes, but only at the points where they intersect with the sculpture. Have a play around with the stretch tool, but don't go into play mode just yet. So far, I've shown you a few ways to edit the shapes you've already sculpted. But there's also a way to edit the shape before stamping or smearing. First of all, make sure you're still scoped into the sculpture. If not, hover over the bridge, hold L1 and press X to scope in. Also, make sure that you're using the stamp shape tool and not the smear shape. Next, choose a shape from the shapes menu and select what colour you want it to be. Now move the new shape right next to the bridge, so that they're touching. Use the grab cam to make sure the shape is touching your bridge. Now hold L1 and press square to open the shape editor, just like when you want to tweak something. When you're in the shape editor, you can let go of L1 and the shape will be fixed in place while editing. Notice the sculpt menu has been replaced with the shape editor. The buttons vary a little depending on which tool and shape you're using. The shape editor for the stamp tool has quite a few options. We're only interested in one for now, the most exciting one, soft blend. The icon is the one with the two circles blending together. If the option isn't there, just check that you have the stamp shape tool equipped and not smear shape. This is important. Next to the icon, there's a slider and a toggle button. Sliders in the shape editor are round, which is unusual, but they work like the sliders and tweak menus. The blend amount slider affects how much the shape will blend with nearby shapes. Try holding X on the slider and moving your imp up and down. This is how you get some truly amazing shapes. The hard blend toggle switches between hard and soft blends. Toggle between the two options with X and see the difference it makes. To close the shape editor, just press circle. Now have a play with your blendable shape. You can only blend shapes that are part of the same sculpture. So if you can't see any blending on your shape, try scoping into the sculpture by holding L1 and pressing X over it. You can make some very cool shapes using blending. Try making subtractive blends too.
Experiment with different shapes and blends on your bridge. Make it really fancy. You can jump back into the shape editor with L1 and square. You can use the shape editor in any of the sculpting tools. Try out using soft blend with the spray paint tool. To exit the shape editor and return to sculpting, just press circle. When you've got the hang of the shape editor and you're happy with your bridge, try it out in play mode and try to get Connie to Cuthbert. Take Connie through the door to finish the tutorial.